for a closer look on how the lifting of sanctions after the oil-rich country. Moshin Milani, Executive Director of the Center for Strategic and Diplomatic Studies, joins me from Florida. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for your time. Let me first ask you your reaction to this um, deal or framework. I am very happy about this historic day. I think this is a very good day for uh, international peace. It is a very good day for Iran. It's a very good day for the six global powers. Now, it does not mean that we are going to eventually have a comprehensive nuclear agreement come this June, but it does mean that the two sides, the six global powers and Iran, have now agreed that they can and they will resolve Iran's nuclear impasse. It is very important to point out that without this agreement, there would have been no possibility of improved relations between Iran and the Western world. With this agreement, now there is that possibility. But there are a lot of uh, obstacles ahead. There are uh, formidable opposition forces in the United States Senate and to a lesser, a lesser extent in, inside Iran. But I believe these obstacles can be, will be overcome and we will have a comprehensive nuclear agreement between Iran and the six global powers. I was listening earlier and the White House has four pages of talking points on this issue and some were saying that that's quite a bit. I mean, that must mean the White House is fairly happy about this. And I know we can talk about the political optics of it, but in, in your opinion, did the, get, did the West win in terms of negotiations? I think the single most important thing to remember about this uh, framework agreement is that uh, about nine years ago, uh, eight years ago, when the crippling sanctions were imposed on Iran, Iran had about 500, 600 spending centrifuges. Iran now has 19,000 of them. Uh, sanctions, yes, they crippled the Iranian economy, but they had no impact whatsoever on Iran's nuclear program. Thanks to President Obama's diplomacy, now we know that Iran will be able to spend no more than 5,000 of its centrifuges. And a major aspect, a major portion of Iran's nuclear program will be stopped and we will have intrusive, vigorous international inspection regimes on Iranian nuclear program. And therefore, the core objective of the Western world that is to prevent Iran from becoming a declared nuclear power has been realized without, without war. This do, is do, a good do, day um, for diplomacy uh, you, and you, for- uh, Wilson, you alluded to this earlier, the US Congress being a potential obstacle. Would they agree with you on that? I think the, uh, the United States Senate can uh, create some headaches for the president. But now that we do have a framework with some important concessions given by the Islamic Republic, huge concessions given by the Islamic Republic, I think the United States Senate is going to have a tough time uh, going against this uh, deal. Because if they do, the international community, the other five global powers, will not go along with another sanctions imposed on Iran because this is not Iran and the U.S. Congress negotiating. This is Iran and six global powers negotiating. China is involved, Russia is involved, Germany is involved, France is involved. Yeah, we've got, we've got the, we've I got think the, the United States Senate will have a tough time. We've got the five this. permanent members plus one, which is Germany. Um, this deal, you mentioned some of the challenges earlier. When we get to June, People are going to want to see more details on how we're going to verify of law the, the, the promises that have been made. What do you think in your mind the biggest challenge is going to be? Are you talking about in terms of implementation of the, uh, of the treaty? Uh, I, well, right now, we have, right now we have a framework. We're going to be waiting for <laughs> additional details on how we're going to do the verification. So the end of June is the next deadline. And I imagine there's going to be quite a lot of heavy lifting still to do, right? Absolutely, absolutely. They have not been, uh, they have not been able to reach uh, agreement on some key uh, elements and how to do it. And the devil is always in details. I think 
how the sanctions are going to be lifted, how quickly they're going to be lifted is going to be one major sticking point. And I, I, I think that Iran is going to insist that these sanctions should be lifted immediately so that the Iranian economy can recover. Now, on the, on the part of the Western world, the sixth global power, they want to make sure that there are no viable path for Iran to build the bomb. And therefore, yeah. they're going to insist on a very, very intrusive inspection regime. So, and so I can see some problem there. I only have another minute left, so I want to get to something very important. We always talk about how the West looks at these potential deals, and I get the reason that that occurs. But I'm curious, from your perspective, the Iranians. Do they feel like they've gotten a good deal? Do the people of Iran feel like this is good for them, this is going to work, and do they feel optimistic that when we come to June 30th, it's going to be a new chapter in terms of their economy? Obviously, I cannot speak on behalf of 80 million people. There are diverse uh, opinions about that. But the impression I have, based on the last presidential election, is that the Iranians want these sanctions to be lifted. Uh, Iran has a very sophisticated and highly educated and highly varied population. They want to be part of the international community. And as I said, everybody in Iran knows, without the resolution of the nuclear issue, Iran could not have joined the international community. With the resolution of that nuclear issue, now Iran has a chance. This is why this is a good day for Iran, as oh. well as for the West. It is a, it is a very big day. Uh, Mohsen Milani, thank you so much for joining us. Uh